Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I want to share with you one thing I learned to do that made installing Gentoo much easier and much faster. And don't worry, it's not some sort of automation script. You'll still get the whole experience of installing Gentoo, but it's just going to be a much more enjoyable one. And this new way of installing Gentoo gets rid of a lot of the headaches I had when I installed Gentoo for the first time. So first I'll be going over my experience installing Gentoo from the very beginning. Then I'll be going over my new way of installing Gentoo. And finally, I'll be going through parts of the installation with you to show you how everything ties together. Feel free to skip ahead if you just want to see what I did. And before we get started, I'd really appreciate if you hit the like button. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. And consider subscribing if you want to see more content like this. So I've been using Gentoo for about six years now. When I first started, I had zero experience with Linux. I was mostly tired of using Windows and was looking for an alternative and one of my friends introduced me to Linux and told me to install Gentoo. I fell for the meme and went ahead and installed Gentoo. And here I am today. So to minimize the chances of me messing something up, I first tried installing it on a virtual machine, then an old PC of mine, and then finally my own laptop. And one thing I learned from this is that installing it on a virtual machine versus a laptop versus a desktop is very different. And I think there are three major issues that people encounter installing Gentoo that most tutorials skim over. The first one is partitioning. Most tutorials install it on a virtual machine, so they don't really care about the partitioning scheme. But most likely you'll be installing it on your own hardware. So you have to be a lot more careful when you're working with partitions because you might have sensitive data. Or maybe you want a more customized scheme like having your own home partition or dual booting. The second thing is connecting to the internet. Again, a lot of these tutorials, they're using a virtual machine which already has internet set up, or they're using a desktop which also already have internet set up. But what if you're installing for a laptop? If you have a laptop, most likely you're going to have to hook it up to an ethernet cable. And some laptops don't even have ethernet connectors. So what do you do then? And the last thing is the requirement of another device. You usually have to have your phone or another device open to read the handbook while you're installing Gentoo. And that's not a really efficient workflow. You have to use this really small screen or you can't copy commands. So there's a lot of room for mistakes. So with all that out of the way, what's this new way of installing Gentoo? Full disclaimer, I didn't come up with this new way. It's been floating around the internet for some time now. I guess just nobody made a video about it. So the new way of installing Gentoo is using Ubuntu. What do I mean by this? Gentoo is such a modular system that you can basically install it with any Linux distribution. Now, what are some of the benefits of using Ubuntu to install Gentoo? Well, one, you have internet access immediately because the Ubuntu Live CD comes with Wi-Fi drivers, so you don't need to pull out your ethernet cable to install it on a laptop. Two, you have a graphical user interface, which some people might argue detracts from the whole Gentoo install experience. But in my opinion, it really helps by having, an up, having a web browser on the side with the handbook open and having a terminal on the other side running commands. And the last thing is it gives you a nice graphical way of managing your partitions, which is really helpful if you don't want to deal with the command line tool and having to type in your own block size and everything. So now let's get into actually installing Gentoo using Ubuntu. So here we are on Ubuntu. I actually installed this on my external hard drive so I can install recording software, but normally you can just use the installation media. And now we can basically open a web browser to the Gentoo handbook and start from there. And then we can open a terminal on the other side for installing Gentoo. At this point, we're basically done the first two steps and we just need to configure our network. And we can basically just go to the top right corner and select our Wi-Fi network that we need to connect to. And we basically finished step three. Now onto step four, preparing the disks. We would need to recreate the same Gentoo folder that the Gentoo installation media have. And we just use Gparted to do all our partitioning. As you can see on my hard drive, I currently have an EFI partition and a Windows partition. So let's say we want to do some dual booting. But let's say we also want to split our partitions 
into a system partition and a home partition for all our personal data. Let's say we want to give Gentoo 50 gigs of space, then give the rest to our user. We set 50 gigs for our partition, and I'll be using ButterFS as our file system. And then we create one for our user as well. And now we can mount our partition just like in the handbook. Next is installing the stage 3 tarball. Normally you would have to use a terminal web browser like Lynx to navigate around to find the URL that you're looking for. But since we have a web browser open, we can just go on the Gentoo website and copy the URL instead. And while you're waiting for the install, you can do whatever you want. Maybe go online, watch some of my videos. Okay, now that the tarball is done downloading, we can unpack it. For the rest of the steps, I'm just gonna skim over parts that I think is important to cover. One thing is copying the DNS info. If you don't do this, you're once you go into the Gentoo system, you're gonna lose the internet from Ubuntu. So you need to do that. And then here we have our mount commands to mount, so we can go into our Gentoo system. So we'll be running all these commands, then we will be ch rooting into our Gentoo system. And one thing that's cool is we can spawn multiple terminals and run different commands at the same time. So we can just open up another terminal and ch root into our Gentoo system while the other one is doing an emerge sync. Another thing is editing our FS tab. So we will need to create an entry for our EFI partition, our root partition, and our home partition. And if you're installing it on a laptop, you most likely need some binary firmware for your Wi-Fi drivers to work. So you need to install that before you lose internet access after you're done the installation. So you would install the Linux firmware package. And while you're at it, you can also install the network manager package so you can get network going once your installation is finished. And while that's installing, we'll also install the bootloader. In my case, I'll be using Grub. Once Grub is done installing, we can run the grub make config command to configure our bootloader. And basically after that, we're at the step of finalizing where we add a user, change the password of our user and change the password of our root. And that's pretty much it for the whole Gen2 install with a few steps here and there that I didn't cover and the whole compiling the kernel and configuring the kernel part. Hopefully this video made it easier for you to install Gen2. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.